Nerd Theory. What's going on everybody? Brian here with Nerd Theory. And as promised, I am going to show you my Blu-ray collection. But I decided there's just a little bit too much, so I'm actually going to break this into parts. So the first part uh, is actually going to be the Criterion, uh, what I've collected over time. And even act actually as of recently, uh, with the Barnes & Noble half-off sale, I've grabbed a few things, and I'll kind of point those out along the way. But I decided to go with this just because the sale's going on, and chances are I'm going to be getting more here in the coming two or three days <laughs> because I have a problem. Okay, so what we're going to start with, basically, is the Ingmar Bergman's Cinema. This we got with the half-off sale because it's just too good of a deal to pass up. You're talking, what, like 20, 29 movies or something like that, 30, uh, for a pretty good price. And this thing is a beast. Uh, Ingmar Bergman, the reason we decided with this one is essentially that my wife went to Barnes & Noble, started picking up Criterions, and noticed that every single one that interests her was an Ingmar Bergman movie. So we just decided, you know what, screw it. Let's just get the whole set at some point, and we end up doing In fact, as you go into the actual single Criterion uh, titles, there's going to be some Ingmar Bergman, so we kind of double-dipped in a way. So we got that. It's so pretty. A huge book inside, and even the book that contains the disc is beautiful, too. So it's a great set. So another box set, since we're on the top shelf here, because I'm running out of room, is The World of Wong Kar Wai. Now, admittedly, I also got this on the sale as well. And I saw the trailer, the Criterion trailer for it, and I was just kind of mesmerized by it. And I started to realize that I'm a really big fan of uh, film from the East, and um, I will definitely start getting into this sooner than later. A lot of people had a problem with the packaging from what I read, but I actually think it's pretty good packaging myself, but that's just my opinion. All right, let's start at the beginning. And we'll start with the spine numbers, or spine order, sorry. Number, spine number two is Seven Samurai, Akira Kurosawa. Now, I am a big believer that if you're new to Criterion and you're about to order some or go to Barnes & Noble, this should be like one of your first ones. This is like the default Criterion that I think people, a lot of people I talk to, um, seem to get at first. Um, I mean, among others, but this always seems to be the one. So I get three and a half hours. It's such a good film. It just leads the way for so many other directors. You know, it's, it's, I don't even know, know what else to say about it. It's great. So, moving on. I was talking about double dipping with the Ingmar Bergman collections. So, we got the Seventh Seal. Classic right there. Probably one of the ones that he's most known for. I mean, among others, but that seems to be the one. Oh, and that one was spine number 11. Now, spine number 13. Jonathan Demme's Silence of the Lambs. I don't really know what to say about this movie that most people don't already know, so I'm just going to say this is probably one of the best digi-packs with the artwork with it. I mean, Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins. It's just, it's a classic, and I just think it's one of those things that you should get. I mean, come on, look at that. It's fantastic. Because I don't know how to put things back in their place. Okay. See, it's things like that I have to edit out. Number 17, Solo, or 120 Days of Sodom. Now, I bought this because I saw a YouTube video. Somebody mentioned that this was actually hard to get, and it was in my local Barnes & Noble uh, last year when they were having the sale. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm ever going to watch this movie. Uh, because when, the more I read about it and the reviews about it, I don't know if I can stomach this movie. Any movie where some dude just defecates on the floor and makes some chick eat it, I'm just kind of like, mm, not my thing, amongst other things that go on uh, with this movie. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. So, that's in the collection at the very least. This is spy number 29. This is Picnic at Hanging Rock. Now, this is more my wife's movie than it is mine. Um, I appreciate it for the cinematography, the costumes, and all that, but the movie itself didn't do anything for me personally, uh, but I can see why a lot of people would consider it a, a really good movie for that reason alone. There, I just felt like there needed to be more super... It was a su kind of supernatural element with the girls disappearing, spoiler alert, but I think uh, that could have been played out a little bit more, but it wasn't. And I know it's not all about that, 
Uh, it's about how it how people uh, girls in the school reacted to it and all that. But Pygmy Hanging Rock, I know they did a mini series, I think, overseas that actually looks like it might be a little bit more fleshed out. So I'll probably check that out at some point too. Spine number 44, The Red Shoe, is another one of my wife's. I don't know what this movie is about. I'll watch it. Um, <laughs> apparently it's a classic. <laughs> Once again, I didn't know anything about The Red Shoes until I started reading about the Criterion release of it. So I'll be interested to watch this. Another great release is number spine number 97, Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee. Um, this movie holds up. And... That's terrible that I have to say that in 2021. I'm just going to leave it at that. Spike Lee, you know, what can you say about that? Danny Aiello, Ruby D, Spike Lee, Bill Nunn, John Turturro, they all did fantastic with this movie. And um, I do think it's a definite for anybody's collection. Number 133, The Vanishing. I saw The Vanishing originally when it was remaining in America in the 1990s with Jeff Bridges and Kiefer Sutherland. And with that, they kind of went with a more ho traditional Hollywood ending with that version. The original version is, I think, superior in a lot of different ways. Not that, that the 90s version was bad by a stretch of the imagination. It's just this kind of, it kind of gets to you a little bit more the way things kind of uh, end. <laughs> Number 135, Rebecca, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, another movie I didn't know much about. My Alfred Hitchcock knowledge pretty much stems from like The Birds and Psycho, Rear Window, Vertigo. And and I never really got, I haven't really watched a lot of the earlier things, but Rebecca, I did watch Rebecca. I have not seen the Netflix uh, remake because I heard it was garbage, but the original one was actually very good. And you can, you can like it just has Alfred Hitchcock written all over it, the cinematography. It's great. Number 157, The Royal Tenenbaums. Out of all the Wes Anderson movies that I've seen so far, I think The Royal Tenenbaums is probably my favorite of them. I liked Rushmore Fine when it came out, but then this came out, and I just loved it. I mean, just everybody involved, Gene Hackman, Angelica Houston, Gwyneth Paltrow, Owen Wilson, they're all just great. I can't recommend this one enough. Number 175, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Terry Gilliam directed, based on the book by Hunter S. Thompson with Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. Um, I wasn't on acid when I watched this movie, but I thought I was, because this is a trippy movie. Um, and, it's, and it's so Terry Gilliam, if you've watched any of his other movies like Time Bandits or 12 Monkeys. It's just really well done. Johnny Depp as Hunter S. Thompson essentially in the movie. It's fantastic. So I recommend this one. I actually love this movie so much I went as Hunter S. Thompson for Halloween one year. Nobody knew who the fuck I was. So this one, <laughs> this one's interesting. So this is spine number 247. This is Slacker by Richard Linkletter. And I was interested in this movie because Kevin Smith um, mentioned that the reason he got into movies and when he made Clerks was because of Slacker. And I was just like, well, I have to see this movie to see what he saw in it for him to become a filmmaker. And I watched it, and it's uh, it's different. You're just basically going around from each person's conversation in this small Texas town to another. And there's no actual plot, I suppose, other than just listening to these people's lives um, in Texas. So, One I have not seen is spine number 277, My Private Idaho, with River Phoenix and Keanu Reeves. I have not watched this one yet. I have really nothing to say about it, other than I I like Gus Van Sant as a director, Good Will Hunting. Um, he directed that, so definitely looking forward to doing this. Now, one of the best digipacks that Criterion has done is another Richard Linklater film, which, Dazed and Confused. The question is, it's not who's in the movie. The question is who is not in this movie. So, and I think the packaging, it, it's just so, it's just so great. I mean, you can tell there's just a lot of love and care going into it. And I appreciate that with any Blu-rays that I collect with Richard Linklater. And I actually didn't watch this until I bought it. It was kind of a blind buy. 
Um, but I'm glad I got it. It was so worth it. Next. Number 374, Bicycle Thieves. Uh, this may be one of the best films ever made. It just says so much about us as human beings and what we'll do to get what we want. And whether you, and everybody thinks they're the good guy until they're not. So let's leave it at that. Next one, Ang Lee is uh, 426 Ang Lee is the Ice Storm. Um, I actually really like this movie. I like the cinematography. I like the uh, costumes in it. Everybody did well in it. Like, uh, who was it? Joan Allen, Elijah Wood, Christina Ricci, Sigourney Weaver, Kevin Klein. It was just this kind of uh, strange, not, I shouldn't say strange look, but this, this look to kind of the upper middle class America in the 70s. Next one on the list here, I shouldn't say list, on the shelf, is number 445, The Earrings of Madame De dot 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 <laughs> day dot, I don't know my wife's correcting me as I go along I have not watched this one yet this is a 2k restoration of a film back from 1953 so I don't have any opinion of it because I haven't seen it yet and this was also done on the 50% off sale next Wim Wenders Paris Texas uh, Texas spine 501 uh, this is the same director as Wings of Desire if you ever watched that movie um, of all the list and YouTube videos I watch, especially for watch the Criterion uh, closet videos, those are always great to watch. Uh, Paris, Texas seems to be one that everybody kind of gravitates to, and I'm not sure why. This is also something I picked up at the 50% off sale a couple days ago. Uh, this will be watched very, very soon. Aha! Next, spy number 538, Pass of Glory, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick is my favorite director, has been since I was a teenager. I was, uh, when he died, I took it kind of hard. But I think Pass of Glory is probably, arguably, one of the best World War I films. And there hasn't really been that many in the grand scheme of things. Everybody talks about, you know, does World War II or Vietnam, and those are great. But not a lot of uh, World War I films. So I would put this probably close to the top. Next one maybe being 1917, but uh, Stanley Kubrick's Pass of Glory, one, uh, one of his first movies, uh, it's great, and uh, Kirk Douglas is great in it as well. <laughs> so next one is spine number 542, Antichrist. Lars von Trier, I kind of had this love-hate relationship with this director. He is, his filmmaking is beautiful. But he just goes places sometimes in his movies that, and it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily bad. It's just uh, it, he just he just goes there. And if you've never seen Antichrist, I don't want to tell you what, anything that goes on with it uh, because it's very surreal. It's very, it's disturbing, and it's very graphic. So, large frontier, like a lot of your work. I do like Antichrist, but dude, Jesus Christ. All right, next, Brian De Palma's Blowout, spy number 562. As I've gotten older, I have appreciated Brian De Palma more and more, Dress to Kill, The Untouchables, Mission Possible. I mean, that's just a few of things that he's done, but I think this is a very underlooked movie. I think this is a very underlooked performance by John Travolta. He is fantastic in this. So I do recommend this, uh, Blowout, Brian De Palma. This next one... I have not gotten into yet. It's the Blue, White, and Red Three Colors collection. I got this on a half-off sale last year because I've heard a lot about it, but uh, I'm not going to really go into it because I don't know enough because I haven't watched it. So, there's that. Next up is a classic, spine number 591, 12 Angry Men. What can I say about this movie? It stands the test of time. Classic, I think... Um, Sidney Lumet is one of the best directors that has ever uh, graced Hollywood. And, yeah, Henry Fonda is, uh, is so good, especially the knife scene. If you, know, you know, if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about, the knife scene. Oof. Next, Spike Jones's being John Malkovich, spy number 611. Um, 
I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched this movie since it came out in 1999. I bought it uh, a couple days ago at the half-off sale. I remembered that I liked it, but I couldn't remember why I liked it. But then I remembered I like Spike Jones and the movies he's done over time. So I'm like, I think this is a, this is a must-have. Next, Shallow Grave, Spy number 616. Danny, Bo one of Danny Boyle's first movies. If not his first, it's probably one of his first. Uh, Ewan McGregor in this movie is fantastic. You look at this and the way it's cut, the way it's shot, and it just screams Danny Boyle. And then he just gets, I think he just got better and better over time. So this is a great um, kind of crime. I'm not going to, eh, kind of, yeah, it is crime. Um, and it's about friends and what greed does between them. So recommend that. Huh. David Fincher is probably coming up as one of my top five directors. And I think a movie that gets underlooked in his filmography is The Game with uh, Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. This movie, I, I love this movie. <laughs> I don't even know, I have to, uh, know what else to say. In 1997 when I watched it, I, like the ending just threw me. Like, wow. Like, once again, you, see, you know what I'm talking about. I think that um, just so moody and atmospheric, well, like David Fincher movies are most of the time, but definitely check this out if you have it. If you like Fight Club, The Social Network, uh, movie, or what was the other one? Gone Girl, things like that. You might like the game. Spy number 647, On the Waterfront with Marlon Brando. I'm just not going to get into it. This is a beautiful digipack. I love digipacks. I wish Criterion would do more digipacks, honestly. Um, a lot of love and care went on with this transfer with the 4K and the DTS Master Audio. Um, yeah. Just watched this uh, a couple days ago, actually. This is Terrence Malick's Badlands with Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek. Um, yeah, it's Terrence Malick. I mean, Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, they do great in the movie, but in a lot of these movies, sometimes I feel like the director is the star and the cinematography in this with Badlands is just kind of out of this world. I can see why a lot of uh, film students kind of gravitate towards it, especially uh, if you ever watch those Criterion Closet videos. They always seem to gravitate towards Badlands. They just love it and I can see why. Next, we're just moving down the line, aren't we? 654, Repo Man, Emilio Estevez, talking about Martin Sheen. Uh, Emilio Estevez, um, yeah, what a, what a strange but fun movie. Alex Cox, where are, you, where are you at? Why aren't you doing more movies? I don't understand. Um, but just, it's just so great. Uh, cult classic, right? Next is 691 Thief, uh, directed by Michael Mann, who created the Miami Vice show and the movie Heat, uh, The Insider, amongst other things. I have not watched this yet. I love Michael Mann movies. This is one of the ones I have not seen. I heard great things. Uh, I just got this on the 50% off sale as well a couple days ago, so I will dive into this sooner than later. Spine number 697, Tess. This is a wife movie, as I like to call it. I have not watched it. Uh, directed by Roman Polanski, uh, for better or for worse, depending on how you look at it. Um, this is a long movie, 171 minutes. I have not watched this movie. I'm sure my wife will tell me all about it whenever she watches it. Going back to Ingmar Bergman, this is Persona Spine number 701. Um, if you're not in the market of getting the complete collection, I would probably, Persona 7 Seal should be probably the two that you would probably need to look at the most if you kind of want to get into it a little bit more. Um, I, it re, this movie reminds me of David Lynch. A David Lynch movie. Very obscure. Um, I'm just going to say abstract. Not obscure. Abstract. I'll put it that way. And I can definitely see him looking at this and getting ideas about his own career. But maybe not. Because David Lynch, we'll get into that later. Another Lars von Trier movie. Spy number 705. Breaking the Waves. Have not watched this yet. Um, but I will. I, I enjoy his movies. Even how weird they can get sometimes because of the cinematography alone, like I said. So we'll get into that one sooner than later. 
David Cronenberg scanners. The head explosion. I mean, I mean <laughs> let's, let's just call it what, let's just say what we're all thinking, right? That's the scene. Whenever they do like those clips of like best movie moments or something like that, it's there's usually the scene where the guy has uh, heads explode at the beginning of the movie. So, David Cronenberg, I love your body horror stuff, and your son. If you haven't seen any of his son's work, is going is right along that line. Next. David Lynch, speaking of which, Eraserhead, number 725. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't, I don't really, I mean, like, it's just so... Weird. Is, isolated and weird. And awesome. It is awesome. I mean, like the alien baby just kind of cooing in the background. It's creepy. And I... There's a lot of layers. Yes, there is a lot of layers, and I mean, well, that's, I mean, and that's with, like, anything with David Lynch, right? There's always so many layers mm -hmm. uh, with m many of his things. Not everything, technically, but a lot of it. So, yeah, one of, it's, I believe, his first actual work. It took him, like, five years to make this movie on and off, but uh, it's the stuff of nightmares sometimes, so. This is, unfortunately, out of print, uh, but Don't Look Now on Blu-ray has Donald Sutherland in it. Uh, uh, horror movie, um, not not by the strictest definition. It's more like what a parent what what parents go through when they lose a child, and trying to get back on track. Um, I think this is it is a strange movie, but I think it's very brilliant because you don't really see what's going to happen towards the end of the movie. It's beautiful. Yeah. Next, Terry Gilliam, spine number 764, The Fisher King. Um, I don't know if Robin Williams won a work for this. Maybe he did. I can't remember. I'm trying to read it on the side here as I talk, but I don't think he did. Um, what a performance um, with Robin Williams in this movie alongside Jeff Bridges. Um, very heartbreaking story when you get down to it. Uh, with his character, everything turns okay. Everything eventually turns out okay, but this the restaurant scene in the movie is probably what's going to get you the most. So, uh, this is another wifey one. This is seven seventy five. A room with a view. I actually watched this. It was it was fine. A lot of these uh, movies um, that take place back, I don't know, whenever eighteen hundreds, I guess, early nineteen hundreds. Um, I like my historical ones. I know you do, and I, <laughs> and it's it's good. It has good, um, it has good performances. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter. You kind of, I don't know if she really did anything big before this, but uh, she's quite lovely in this. She did very very well. Daniel Day Lewis is in this as well. So a lot of people kind of starting off uh, were in this movie. Uh, so if you like that kind of thing, um, these kind of movies, definitely check it out. Going back to Wes Anderson, spine number 776, Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, have not watched this yet. One of the few Wes, Ander Wes Anderson movies I have not seen. Uh, so, this will be seen sooner than later, for sure. Oh, and a digi pack. It's very lovely. Going back to David Lynch, seven, seven, spine number 779, Mulholland Drive. Out of all the David Lynch movies, this is probably my favorite. I know, like, everybody seems to say that. Mulholland Drive being the favorite, but there's a reason for that. It's just, it's a story about, I like stories about Hollywood in general, whether it's old Hollywood or new Hollywood. But when you start taking it to this kind of like dual persona uh, type of road that I believe that this goes down, I say it is, probably not knowing what the hell I'm talking about, by the way. But I just, I, it, this movie is very mesmerizing uh, for me. And Naomi Watts does a, of a job in it as well. Lady Snowblood. This is actually two movies. Lady Snowblood and Lady Snowblood Love Song of Vengeance. If you've ever seen any Quentin Tarantino movie, especially the Kill Bill ones, you can definitely see where the inspiration comes from. And I believe, in, and it might be true, I'm not sure, but I believe that he watched this movie and there was a lot of ideas that were planted uh, because of it. So... Very good. I haven't seen the second one yet, but the first one was fantastic. We watched it on the Criterion channel. So, 
going back to Stanley Kubrick. 821, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, Black and White, Peter Sellers, um, George C. Scott. Very funny movie. Um, I know it's basically poking fun at war. It's surprisingly funny. Yeah, they're, they're just poking fun, you know. It, it's, um, oh, there's a word for it I can't think of right now. Tongue-in-cheek. Well, not, not tongue-in-cheek, but God, somebody's going to comment on below. It's this, you moron. But um, it's very, uh, yeah, it's self-aware. It's very aware of what it's doing uh, as far as talking about war. So definitely another wifey movie just because I don't really get into musicals. Uh, but here's Valley of the Dolls, spine number 835. And I feel, and I, I, it wasn't bad. I actually didn't mind the movie so much um, because it's dealing with fame, essentially. Um, and how and how it affects pe different people. Okay, so. I have to say it. Okay. A lot of my picks are because I read the books, I fall in love with the books, and then I have to see the movie. And fair a enough. lot of these are where it's coming from. Fair, no, it's fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So, yeah, not a bad movie at all, though. I liked it more than I thought it would. I'll put it that way. Next, Paul Thomas Anderson's Punk, of Lo Punk Drunk Love, <laughs> spine number 843 with Adam Sandler. I think that this movie is very overlooked, it, and there's someone knocking at my door. Satire. That's the word I was thinking of with the Dr. Strange Love. It's a satire about war. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next one is, don't shake your head at me, 843 is Punk Drunk Love. Um, I think people really, at the time, really dismissed this movie. Uh, because of Adam Sandler kind of taking on a more serious role for the first time, I believe. And I think he did really well with with the movie alongside with Emily Watson as well. This I, I feel sorry for the poor guy more than anything in this movie. But you can definitely see, like, Adam Sandler is very, back, well, at least back then, was very known for having characters that kind of went off the deep end. And he does this in this movie, but not because just because to get a laugh out of you. He does it because he's... Mentally, it seemed like in a lot of pain. So, but yeah. yeah. Squid and the Whale. Spine number uh, 845. Noah Baumbach directed this, who also did a marriage story uh, that's also on the Criterion, which I don't have. Um, I'm very mixed about this movie. I understand what it's going, what it was going for, but everybody in this movie, maybe aside from the mother, is so effing pretentious. And, and that's probably the point. You're not really supposed to like a lot of these characters, I think. I know I didn't personally. Other people probably have a, uh, a different opinion about it, which is fine. Um, but I found it very hard to feel sorry for anybody in this movie. Uh, not the wife, not the husband, or even the kids for that matter. But not a bad. it's not a bad movie. Uh, one of the greatest, probably greatest trilogies that don't involve superheroes or Star Wars or anything like that would be the before trilogy. Richard Linklater, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it to you. Um, creating this trilogy, setting it like every 10 years, going through these this, this couple's relationship through meeting each other for their first time and then eventually getting married and have the same actors come back and do it, I think that's really, really great. I know he did it with Boyhood where... He shot it for so many years over the time. That's that's a lot of guts. I mean, what happens, you know, if someone, God forbid, dies or something during these productions? And I know this isn't exactly the same because he probably could have just ended it with two movies if he really had to. I read recently that the actress uh, Julie Delpy declined on doing a fourth one because it's coming up on the ten year mark if it hasn't already, unfortunately. So that's kind of that's kind of a bummer, but I think it's okay where it ended off at uh, a series basically saying kind of the obvious things that we know in life but just don't know how to say it going from everything's great we're in love and then having to deal with things in a marriage and sometimes things just don't stay the same and you have to work through that so it's a very good very good trilogy Mildred Pierce this is on the half off sale a couple days ago I have not watched this this was a request from my wife um, but I am interested in it I'm interested in back, you know with older movies uh, so, we'll definitely get into this. Next up, this is also on the half-off sale. This is uh, Spine 872. This is Ghost World. 
this is probably the closest thing to a Daria movie that you're ever going to get to. <laughs> Just very sarcastic. Uh, really well done script. I hadn't seen it in a long, long time, but I remembered liking it when I watched it. And when I discovered it was on Criterion, I just had to do it. So, Ghost World. Going back to Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, Spine Number 897. This is my one of my wife's favorite movies. Uh, she had not seen it until I introduced it to her, what, last year, I think it was. Because she liked... This is one of those movies that take place way back, you know, <laughs> uh, back during in England during, or Scotland rather, with kings and lords and all that. Uh, but it's one of the few movies like that that I like, and it's probably because it's directed by Stanley Kubrick. But the cinematography in this, in terms of how they use candlelight to illuminate the rest of the, uh, make special lenses uh, to illuminate the rest of the room, I don't know. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just getting tongue-tied. So, Barry Lyndon, awesome. Going back to David Lynch, Spine number 898, Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. This movie got shit on a lot when it came out. And it was coming from a time when Twin Peaks was this really big thing that ended suddenly because the second season kind of, kind of, kind of sucked. And the, but the way it ended, I think a lot of people thought that this was going to be some sort of sequel to, you know, what happened with Asian Cooper. And it wasn't. It was about what was going on with Laura Palmer. And I think that, you know, in retrospect, and I didn't watch this back when I was a kid, but in retrospect, looking at it, or thinking about it even more after watching the series, I think that was a better call. Because how do you feel, how do you feel pain for someone if you don't know what they had to go through to get to that point? So, I think this is a very well done movie. It's David Lynch, so it is weird, but if you watch David Lynch, you already know that, so... <clears throat> Thomas Paine's election, uh, spine number 904, has Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. Um, I like this movie overall. It's not one of my favorite movies, but my wife loves it. So we got an election. Uh, I haven't watched it yet since we got it, but uh, we will for sure. So next up is a classic, The Breakfast Club. John Hughes, what are you going to say? at this point about The Breakfast Club. Right? Our child's one of her favorite movies. Yeah, it's one of our kids' favorite movies, so hopefully we're raising her right. Next, another George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, spine number 909. You know, the father of zombie films, right? We're just go back to the original. And it actually still holds up in a lot of ways. But it's also a commentary on the times as well, which a lot of his films were, so. Definitely, definitely like that one. Another one, 913. One I didn't mind, Age of Innocence with Michelle Pfeiffer and Daniel Day-Lewis. I actually like this one, uh, given, you know, the time frame that it was set in. Uh, but this is actually a Martin Scorsese movie. A lot of people, I don't think, really know that um, going into it sometimes. But uh, very different for him, but very great. Costumes were amazing. The sets were amazing. So, I'll give credit where credit's due. This was a good one. I picked good. <laughs> you done good, honey. <laughs> Next, Midnight Cowboy from 1969, spine number 925. A lot of people, back in the, well, back in the day, this was rated, uh, this was uh, risque. It was one of the first movies that were rated X that won Academy Awards. And a lot of people talk about John Voight in this movie, which deservedly so, but Dustin Hoffman as Ratso in this movie. What a performance. This is a really good movie. I'm glad I got it. Next up, we got this on the half-off sale. Bull Durham, uh, 936, comedy with Kevin Costner, Susan, Susan Sarandon, and Tim Robbins. I think this movie's hilarious. I think, um, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised that it's in the Criterion Collection, but I'm happy that it is. So, if you haven't seen Bull Durham, you want to kind of a good laugh go with that one. Next up, let's talk about love and care. Spine number 948, The Princess Bride. I mean... storybook thing right there kind of yeah it's by far one of the coolest ones it is one of the coolest ones so and I just lost where I was there we go next up we got this on the half off sale a couple days ago some like it hot I've seen this my wife has not yet 
Um, she will. I'm excited. Um, I think I think this is a, another very funny movie made back in 1959. I I, I love Billy Wilder's one of the greatest directors as well. Uh, I do recommend this a lot if you have not seen it. Looks right up my alley. David Lynch's Blue Velvet, uh, Digipack, spine number 977. Um, Dennis Hopper is terrifying in this movie. Say what you want about, you know, some of the things that go on. A lot of people had a problem with the Isabella Rosalini nude scene. Um, and it was out there, but it is what it is. But, like, everybody does good. In the, most people do really great in these movies. But Dennis Hopper... Just, yeah, yeah. Good David Lynch movie, uh, film. So if you collect these movies and are collecting David Lynch, for sure. Wes Anderson, spine number 1025, The Grand Budapest Hotel. This is probably my second favorite Wes Anderson movie. And this is my wife's favorite one out of all of them that she's seen. And with good reason, too. The colors in this thing is just uh, fantastic. It's a 2K transfer. I wish it was 4K. Um, but still, I mean, it's just a colorful, whimsical Wes Anderson movie. Next up, spine number 1027, The Great Escape. Probably considered one of the best um, World War II movies in terms of escape, at least uh, escape movies, I'll put it right like that. Uh, but uh, so many people in this movie, James Coburn, Donald Pleasance, um, Richard Attenborough, Steve McQueen, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a classic. Next up, the surprise of the year for me, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, is A Portrait of a Lady on Fire, spine number 1034. Um, it's, a, it, it's, it's a beautiful movie all throughout, Every you know, the performances in it, the relationship between the two women. Um, in the movie is uh, it was unexpected I think it was unexpected for a lot of people the year it came out was 2019 so definitely criterion worthy for sure <sighs> spine number 1035 this one's kind of tough to talk about come and see this is probably the scariest movie that you scariest war movie or one of the best war movies that you have probably never seen um, one of the most realistic yeah it's it's not based... They're not American soldiers. It's based in Russia. And... It's heart-wrenching. It's it's a tough watch, uh, for sure. Just all the things that this poor kid has to go through. And I have to give props, too, for like the makeup department and things like that. Because when this movie starts off, our the young boy that we kind of focus on through the movie starts off this very idealistic kid. I'm going to fight the war. You know, I'm going to do the right thing. And then you can just see him age. Mm -hmm. Even though he probably really didn't age that much, when you get to the end of the film, and I'm sure it's the way that the dirt and the all that's piled on his face, making his look, his, like, the creases in his face show up a little bit more, but he, he just looks old. Yeah, he, it, isn't like he, it isn't like he grew up. It's like yeah. he literally got old. Yeah. Um, and there's some of the imagery, especially towards the end, it's just uh, it's shocking. It's a great movie. But, um, and it's a shame, and I'm glad Criterion brought it because I think it does need to be brought to the forefront a little bit more because it is a great war movie as well. Getting towards the end, guys. Sp spine number 1037 War of the Worlds. I, apparently, I need to wrap this up. War of the Worlds, the original, Aliens. Uh, great movie. David Lynch is The Elephant Man, one of the movies that he won an award for, I believe. Elephant Man, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. One of his best works. Spine number 1054, Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. Look at that. And I like the fact that it's like the... Um, oh, God, what was it? Braille? The, no, it's not Braille. It's I thought the, it was uh, the Braille for it. No, Parasite. it's the Braille. No, it's the do 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 Oh, you it's... Know? uh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why can't either one of us remember what it's know. called? Morse Code. Morse Code. The Morse code spells out Paris. Oh, God. No one ever realized that. So, great movie. Award Sorry, winning. Sorry, guys. It's yeah, late. It is late. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do this, to be honest with you. Moonstruck. Never seen it before. Cher. Cher's great. 
is, is a great a great singer too, but a really uh, great actress in Moonstruck, along with Nicolas Cage and Olympia Dukakis in this movie. So another one your wife introduced yeah. you to. It is. It is. I'll give. I'll give credit where credit's due. You did introduce me. Crash, and this isn't the Crash that won. No. The best picture award <laughs> for whatever reason. Not at all. This is Crash where people get turned on by car wrecks. It's weird. It's, it's awesome. Weird. And it's another David Cronenberg <laughs> movie. So. <laughs> it's it's awesome in an uncomfortable kind of way. <laughs> uh, smooth talk. We watched this. This is kind of more of a blind buy, really. Uh, but it kind of you know it starts off. You kind of have this. Uh, idealistic or not idealistic but this girl that just wants to kind of grow up played by Laura Dern who apparently is like one of the tallest women in the planet yeah. because like she's like supposed to be 16 17 she's she super tall she looks like 28 in the movie but it gets really creepy towards the end yeah. so memories of murder Bong Joon-ho we watched this before uh. we bought the criterion uh, another great film by him he can um, do no wrong yeah I'm starting to think the same thing based on what I watched so far so one of the newer ones definitely go with Check that out. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, classic from 1982. <laughs> Just watched this the other day. There's a lot of nudity. I forgot, yeah, I forgot how much nudity was actually in this movie. <laughs> it's 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 a lot more nudity as far as what's in it. But it's funny as hell. Yeah. Perfect 80s movie. It's like, it's almost like Mall Rats, only set in 1982 in a lot of ways. And then finally, another box set. This is actually the Guillermo del Toro trilogy that has... This is my holy grail. Holy Grail, Kronos, The Devil's Backbone, and Pad's Labyrinth. Um, you gonna open it up? I, do we have time to? You got like three minutes. Oh, okay. So I went through that pretty quick. So I mean, yeah, just going through it, it's just so pretty looking. The way I pitched a hissy up. fit for this. She did, and like just like everything else, she always. This was my was. Mother's Day gift, it so was. it was totally awesome. Yeah. So kind of folds out like that. You got this huge. Yeah, the book's gigantic. Book it's awesome. In there. And then you got the Pan's Lab with Creature. So pretty. In there as well, so. Oh, this was coming out. So, where's the lid for that? There we go. So that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, this would have been a huge video if I decided to do all of these um, at once, and I'm glad I did it this way. Yeah, you're gonna have criteria. to break them up. We'll have to break it up. Maybe next time we'll do Arrow or something like that. But I wanted to do this first because I have more Criterion coming in, so that way I can do Criterion uh, hauls videos and stuff like that and you already have an idea of what i already have so with that i'm brian with nerd theory thanks for sticking around for this long because i don't know how long this video is um please like subscribe all that good stuff to keep up with what i collect thanks